All right, um, so we're going to do the lac opera, which is a classic bit of biology. And the idea behind this is we've got all these genes um, in, in organisms, but why are some of them switched on or how, more importantly, are some of them switched on or switched off? You don't want all your genes operating all the time because you'll end up making uh, a lot of proteins that perhaps you don't need. Uh, to give you a, a human example of that, uh, babies uh, which are fed on milk, <coughs> excuse me, there's an enzyme present that will curdle the milk into a kind of blob and make it a lot easier to be broken down. Now, when a baby stops feeding on milk, when it moves on to solids, in theory, there's no need for it to make this enzyme anymore. It's just a waste of time. Now, of course, you might say, but we, we drink milk as adults. Well, yes, but that's something that we evolved to do culturally. Um, I use the word evolved there. But culturally, we, we learn to start taking milk from other animals, such as cattle, uh, sheep and goats. Some point in the past, a mutation meant that this enzyme for digesting lactose, or for clumping it, stayed switched on, and that became an advantage to us. Some people, this enzyme stays switched off, and we'd say that they're lactose intolerant, they would struggle to um, digest milk. <clears throat> so, you get the idea that um, enzymes and proteins sometimes will be switched off, that you don't need to make them all the time, it's just a waste of um, resources. This idea of being able to turn enzymes on and off um, it's called induction, um, and in this case, the lac operon, the inducer molecule is lactose. Uh, lactose is a disaccharide, I'll just put it like that, which is um, comprises of something called galactose uh, and glucose. Okay, so it's uh, lactose is actually a, a sugar found in milk, quite commonly. The lac operon was, was first identified in um, Escherichia coli, which is a, a bacterium commonly found in um, your guts. And this was the first uh, organism to have its genome sequence. So we, we know a bit about how this works from, from E. coli, and we use this as a simple model. So what we have is, is this. Um, ignore this, this first bit for a second. Here are, are two genes, and we, um, we call these structural genes. And these are the ones that are responsible, these are the, the sequences of DNA that are going to make um, our proteins. In this case they make, uh, this first one here makes something called beta-galactosidase. And this is an enzyme that is responsible for breaking galactose down into, galacto uh, sorry, breaking lactose into galactose and glucose. And this second enzyme here is uh, sorry, the second gene here is responsible for making something called lactose permease. And what lactose permease does is it makes it easier for lactose to come into a cell. And um, we'll come back to the, these two in a second. So those are our two genes. So perhaps in a, a simple model, we might just say, well, RNA polymerase comes along and it reads the gene and it makes beta galactosidase and it keeps going on. And it makes lactose permease. Now we're going to complicate this because in fact, genes don't always work this way, they don't work this way. In order to express a gene, which means to read it, or in other words, the expression of a gene means transcription of a gene, the conversion to messenger RNA, and translation, taking that original messenger RNA message and putting it into an amino acid sequence. That's what we'd call expression. So in order to get a gene to express, we have to go through a series of steps. And this, I'm gonna use this uh, as, as to represent my RNA polymerase. What will happen is the RNA polymerase enzyme will bind onto this region here called P or the promoter region. It then moves along and it will read the gene. So we'd have our string of messenger RNA and it would eventually come off at the end. Now you might notice in your book, uh, I think it's on figure, uh, figure three on page 113, as this reads along, the RNA strand doesn't come off as two, I know we've got two genes here, it doesn't come off as two separate genes, it comes off as one line. And that's just something that happens in um, prokaryotes. It doesn't really happen in, in eukaryotic cells as much, but just in case that confused and you thought, why is it one continual line? It just is in prokaryotes. Anyway, so this region here, the promoter region, is the bit where the RNA binds. It's, it's So it knows that this is the beginning, if you like, of what it's got to do, okay? Now, remember we said that we don't always want all enzymes switched on. So we have to have a mechanism perhaps to switch this off. And the mechanism I'm gonna use is 
works here it, it works on this region called the operator region and I'm going to represent um, a, a protein here by using this 10 pence this is called um, this is a repressor protein I should write this down green why not and what the repressor protein does is it literally just binds on to this operator region I said literally we're not actually quite sure how it, how it works but we know it binds on in some way and it means that um, uh, our RNA polymerase can't fit onto the promoter region and so because it can't fit it never gets to read the gene, the gene isn't expressed so as long as this repressor protein is present this gene will not work where does this repressor protein came, come from? well it comes from further back here uh, and this is the I region also known as the uh, regulatory gene and all this is doing is making a protein the repressor protein so this will be constantly in fact there'll be another RNA molecule reading this off and going Boop, there's some more repressor Boop, there's some more repressor this is easy this just stays switched on all the time nothing happens to this it just keeps doing its job okay now this is where we start to get the interesting bit in the presence of um, lactose and I'll use this one pence piece here so that's uh, that's gonna be lactose the gene is switched on and how does it do it well lactose will bind on to that repressor protein and as it binds on to it <coughs> excuse me it changes its shape so if you think back to the idea of enzymes where when things bind into the active site for example it changes shape or if you think about that uh, non-competitive inhibition something fitting on the other side of an enzyme causing it to change shape similar idea as the lactose binds onto the repressor protein it changes shape and because its shape has changed it comes off it no longer can bind onto this operator region because of that RNA can then bind and off it goes now if you think for a second we've got lots of these repressor proteins in here so it's no good just having a bit of lactose present that would come off because another one would just join on so as long as there's an excess of a lactose in here they're all going to be binding onto these repressor proteins so there's nothing to stop it this breaks it down the operator re region is released RNA polymerase rolls along now this enzyme remember um, breaks down the lactose so eventually we're going to start breaking this lactose down and all the, any more free lactose in the cell and at that point the repressor protein will bind back again and we've switched our gene off now somebody pointed out it was Ruby I think um, in, in my class and she said well that's great but how does the lactose this enzyme I should say remember we said um, it allows more lactose into the cell and she said well until that's switched on how do you get lactose in the cell to start with how does the whole um, process start some lactose will get in what this um, protein does is allow you to get plenty of lactose in normally E. coli would be um, respiring glucose but in the absence of glucose it switches over to this system uh, which is a bit less efficient for respiration but it can still do it um, our uh, structural genes are expressed or induced and it will start respiring lactose the operon finally itself um, refers to the um, structural genes and the promoter and the operator site so that's the actual LAC operon itself this um, regulatory gene um, which makes a repressor protein is further we might call it upstream which means before we get to that because remember we now know that we've got a direction to to genes we read them along in a certain direction remember from the RNA polymerase when we looked at transcription